Everyone knows that FTL is impossible. The laws of physics cannot be bent, they cannot be cheated, and they sure as hell can't be ignored. This is because it isn't some random speed at which light goes through. It is the speed of causality, the fastest point that two points in our universe can interact with each other. Basically, places and times which we need to go FTL in order to reach are basically not in our universe since we can't interact them. Travelling faster than light is just as impossible as going to another universe, or travelling back in time. It breaks the laws of reality itself. Hence, impossible. Spaceships getting to 1% the speed of light was already a miracle. No amount of fuel could allow us to reach higher than that. Now for the implications. Most sentients lived to the radio age, and lived to contact other civilizations. But since none managed to crack the trick behind FTL, everyone decided that they were better off at home better than spending thousands of years in transit. Civilizations lived and died, never knowing another world, never seeing each other. After millennia of stagnation, even when each of us lived for close to 10,000 years, we wouldn't spend a lifetime to reach another planet, which may or may not be able to support us. Well, that's when we heard the bleep of a newly awakened race. Just like us, they decided that FTL was possible, and they failed over and over. Just like us, they colonized their solar system and were stuck. They could not expand beyond. They were trapped like every other bloody race in the history of our galaxy. Though this contact was only 200 light years away from our star, the closest civilization we had ever contacted, we were jubilant and worked to study and trade with them as much as possible. But then one thing happened. You see, in a universe where the only thing to be transmitted is information, information becomes incredibly valuable. Status is decided by how many alien languages we know, how many planets we can name, how well we can locate ourselves on a galactic map, alien recipes, works of art, culture and so on. And in this, the humans were possibly the wealthiest race in existence that we knew about. Thousands of years of history, hundreds of cultures and languages. They could trade for anything, and we would have given it to them. They knew this, and completely extorted us, sending us half their history and then waiting 400 years to send the next packet, while we desperately tried to understand what happened to the Roman Republic after Caesar's death. They got a lot more than we ever did from the exchange, for sure. But while we traded for art and culture, they traded for technology, fusion, artificial gravity, the dangers of singularity, secrets of the universe, a grand unified theory and more. Well, what was the harm? They weren't going to attack someone over 200 light years away. and so. Within 800 years we became their partner, a highly short time under any circumstance. But then, we saw the single most incredible thing that we had ever observed in the entirety of the cosmos. Their star dimmed. We scrambled. What was going on? What could have caused this catastrophe? We analysed the data again and again. For hundreds of years, debates raged in the sciences. Was it far older than we thought? Was it a natural phenomenon? Did they blow up a planet? And that was a dust cloud? What was going on? After 400 years, we received the answer. A Dyson swarm. Millions upon millions of satellites orbiting their star, habitats, solar arrays, research stations and more. Even their homeworld had become a shell world. Partially hollowed out with dozens of layers one on top of the other. And their population numbered in the hundreds of billions in just a few thousand years. We pleaded for them to stop. That they were going to burn out their resources only after a few thousand years. They only replied with, watch this. Yes, a cliffhanger when you have a time delay of 400 years. Well, through our best telescopes, we watched as energy from their sun was redirected to a single point. It looked like an asteroid. No, it couldn't be. A starship with a light sail, powered by the sun, capable of reaching 10% light speed. They were expanding. We asked them what they were doing. They replied with, we found a potentially habitable world 560 light years away. We're colonizing it. Just so you know, we surveyed the world. It was 900 degrees, had a gravity of 1.4 that of Earth, and could not support any kind of life. Never mind their kind. What the hell they were thinking? They replied with, wait till it gets there. Playing coy when it got there after 10,000 years. One of our lifetimes. About two-third of theirs and that point. Well, we would see, wouldn't we? This was the first time we had heard of anything even remotely similar to this. They could not make it. 
The distance is too vast. An entire generation would be spent reaching there. They then sent another ship, and another, and another. All in all, 500 starships to colonize distant stars. We thought them mad. No, more than mad, insane, stupid. What use could they have to expand? They had enough resources in their home system to last until the heat death of the universe. They could learn all they wanted to from their home planet. Why would they expand? Well, we wouldn't dare to change our solar system to the extent that they did. But at we decided to build something, just in case they decided to visit and weren't happy with us. We spent our time creating a solar gun. No, I'm serious. They colonized the galaxy. And instead of following suit, we built a giant gun. Well, we all know how that turned out. Within 15,000 years, they had control over 400 star systems. About 100 colonies were lost. But they really didn't care. And this time, the humans on each world decided that they'd have a bokla, measuring contest with whoever could build the largest megastructure. No, I'm serious. Some built Dyson spheres, some ring worlds, some several ring worlds, some disc worlds, some mined their star, and decided to build, and I kid you not, a giant middle finger at their rival. Three of them decided to build a Dyson sphere across half their star to move it. Well, they were actually racing their goddamned star system to see who could reach the Crab Nebula first. But they didn't stop there. Earth, meanwhile, was pumping out colony ship after colony ship, in strict silence to all but a couple of races, including ours. Within a few more millennia, they had colonized more stars than there were species in the galaxy. Fucking humans, right? After about 500,000 years of this, they had control of a billion suns, many of which didn't even have planets. They just mined the star for raw materials. We, meanwhile, were twirling our thumbs. Our high horse of not willing to dilute ourselves in useless endeavors and fixing problems made sure that by the time I was born, we would look up at the sky, and it didn't belong to our gods of old. No. Every star in the sky belonged to humanity. Worst of all, they had started to break contact with us. Oh, they kept away from our system, but they would barely talk to us. We never knew if we were beneath them, or whether they wanted to have a single voice towards aliens. But something was for sure. We became pathetic compared to them. It should be said that just because there was distance didn't mean there wasn't war. Oh, trust mankind for that. Once, 15 million systems decided to launch relativistic missiles and sunbeams at each other. But overall, since you couldn't see each other, there was very little reason to fight. They broke many rules, but that wasn't one of them. Wars were fought within a system. Sometimes even a couple of stars blew up taking hundreds of billions of souls along. But they were but a drop among the trillions upon trillions that considered themselves as part of the human race. Trouble was, they didn't want our little corner of the universe, they wanted all of it. A consortium of 400 million human worlds worked together to create a massive computer matryoshka brain around a star, utilizing 100% of its power to run calculations. And you know what their first question was? How do we travel faster than light? After all this time, they were still looking for an answer. It took a few hundred years, but the computer replied, You can't. But barely saddened, they asked again, How can we talk faster than light? Ah, now that's something no one had ever thought about before. Well, we did, but nothing came from the questions. But this time, it was a computer the size of a star answering it, not mere mortals. It took over a hundred thousand years, enough for another billion colonies, but they found the answer. The most valuable and important piece of information in the entire universe. Unsurprisingly, they kept it for themselves. Their colonies could talk to each other real time. And we saw the difference. Suddenly, the whole galaxy lit up in a flurry of knowledge and communication. Art, sciences, technology for the humans were advanced a billionfold while we lagged behind, only staring longingly through telescopes at the vast worlds the humans had built up from mere asteroids. Still, there remained one thing. While they remained close, they could never travel faster than light. But even so, our scientists decided to have a look at the problem. What if it were possible? What if we could? We started to ask ourselves. But such a question was short-lived. Out of nowhere, in orbit above our world, we saw a tremendous disturbance in space-time, greater than we could ever create, greater than we had ever detected. A white hole. No. A human ship. Those bastards. They cracked it. After a million years, they finally cracked it. 
We sent up a single question. The first time we had ever directly spoken to an alien. You know what the question was? Why? They only replied, it's in our nature. We're only human. <laughs>